It's no secret that the Oregon Ducks have been dominating this offseason and building an incredible roster for the future. Because next season, the landscape of college football is going to really change and the Ducks need to be prepared. But I do think Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks are set up perfectly to knock down the door to the Big Ten Conference and make a huge statement right away. They are coming off a 12-2 season and their only two losses were against the Washington Huskies. And the Washington Huskies won both of those games by only three points. And they went on and made it to the national championship game. Oregon may have came up short last year in the Pac-12 championship game against Washington. But Oregon is only getting better and they have a lot more to prove. And with the expansion of the playoffs, you could argue that they are a lock for the 12-team playoffs next season. Because the Oregon Ducks returned 69% of production from last year. They are also only one of the four teams in the country with a 2024 win total of 10.5. And And they upgraded their roster through the transfer portal and high school recruiting. They have a top 5 2024 recruiting class and transfer portal class. And they have brought in some huge additions through the transfer portal. Including bringing in one of the best returning quarterbacks in the country, Dylan Gabriel. And they add Dante Moore to be the backup as well. And he was a 5-star recruit out of high school. So they got two of the best quarterbacks from the transfer portal. And they are really set at quarterback because they also got a solid quarterback who is Austin Novosad. And he may have potential to battle with Dante Moore for the starting job after Dylan Gabriel is gone. But the Oregon Ducks also added the number one wide receiver from the transfer portal, Evan Stewart. And the receiving room is going to be very stacked. They also added many key additions in the secondary. Kobe Savage from Kansas State, Cam Alexander from UTSA, Brandon Johnson from Duke, and more recently they added Peyton Woodyard from Alabama. But one of the big time additions that is very fascinating to me is the addition of former Washington cornerback Jabbar Muhammad. And in this video, I wanted to preview what this Oregon Ducks secondary can be with a guy like Jabbar Muhammad. And I'm not over exaggerating. When I put best lockdown corner in the thumbnail, he should definitely be in that conversation because the dude can make it difficult on anybody who has to run routes on him. And last season, ironically enough, he was a big part of the reason for Oregon's two losses last season. Jabbar Muhammad was the top cornerback on the roster for Washington last season. He started all 15 games for Washington last season, and he was also an all-Pac-12 second-team player in 2023. He started his college career at Oklahoma State, where he earned an honorable mention in the All-Big 12 in 2022, and he elevated his game even more after transferring to the Huskies. And he was second in passes defended with 20, and he also had three interceptions and 46 tackles. He also recovered a fumble and had two sacks. He really plays all over the field, and he could truly make it difficult for a defense in every way imaginable. And it doesn't matter if he's chasing down a quarterback and wrapping them up at the ankles or locking down the number one receiver on the opposing offense. Because throwing a one-on-one -on -one ball with Jabbar Muhammad at cornerback is very dangerous. Because Jabbar Muhammad had 14 pass deflections for Washington last season, which was near the top of the country. And he was the only cornerback in the Power Five that had that many pass deflections on top of having three interceptions. And I really think Jabbar Muhammad could be a perfect fit for the Oregon Ducks. The Oregon Ducks haven't really had that standout cornerback in the secondary. And that may have held them back a bit last season. And I'm definitely not saying that they were not talented in the secondary. They definitely had a talented secondary. But they didn't have a real lockdown corner in the secondary. And there would be times where the cornerbacks for Oregon got beat deep. But I really think the additions that Oregon has made in the transfer portal for the secondary is going to pay off. And having a lockdown corner like Jabbar Muhammad heading into the Big Ten is going to be scary. Because he can really play all over the field and he wraps up pretty well when tackling. So he is not just your average cornerback who just stays back and doesn't like to get involved. Because he can really do it all, and he could be a nightmare for Big Ten offenses. Jabbar Muhammad was very open about his decision to transfer to Oregon. And this is exactly what he had to say about transferring to Oregon. For the last year of my career, I just think it's the best fit for me. It's a stable situation, and I get to play with a defense and head coach, which I've never done before. Just the ins and outs of the scheme is going to put me in a position to make plays. Just Oregon, just knowing what kind of market Oregon had up there, they're going to market you. They're going to do a good job promoting you and putting you out there. Just putting myself in the position to be drafted next year and just being able to play at the next level. Muhammad chose Oregon from a top group that also included Texas and Alabama. While he visited each school, he had a feeling it was going to be Eugene bound based on the relentless effort from the coaching staff. Throughout the whole process, Coach Dale Lanning, he was FaceTiming me. Coach Toast was FaceTiming, Coach Hamp was FaceTiming, 
and all these guys were calling me, telling me their plans for me. I always had a feeling throughout the whole process, I always kind of knew where I wanted to be. It's going to be very interesting to see how this Oregon Duck secondary looks in 2024. Dan Lanning is a defensive-minded guy, and Jabbar Muhammad played for a not-so-great Washington secondary last season. But let me tell you, pairing Jabbar Muhammad with a defensive-minded head coach and a much better secondary could definitely help elevate his game even more in 2024. The Big Ten also plays at a much different pace than Pac-12 teams do. There's not a lot of explosive offenses in the Big Ten, so we'll see how that plays a factor. But Oregon still has that game in Eugene against Ohio State, and that game could potentially be a fun one, and it's going to be interesting to see how their styles clash in that game next season. Is it going to be a slower-paced, ground-and-pound game, or is it going to be a higher-scoring shootout? And regardless of what type of game it is, I know Oregon is going to have to play their best game defensively. And having a guy like Jabbar Muhammad matching up on a guy like Emeka Abuka should make it a lot more easier for Oregon on defense. And either way, I really do expect Jabbar Muhammad to be one of the most active players for Oregon on the defensive side of the ball next year. And he might just be the best player in the secondary for Oregon. And Oregon has a lot of new faces in the secondary because they lost many of their top cornerbacks from last season. They lost Kyrie Jackson, who went to the NFL. But I wouldn't be surprised if this was a better secondary than last season, because Jabbar Muhammad is going to be a lockdown cornerback for Oregon in the secondary. But the Oregon Ducks also added Cam Alexander, who was one of the best cornerbacks from the group of five last season. And he doesn't get talked about a lot, but Oregon also added Kobe Savage, who was a highly productive safety for Kansas State last season. Oregon also returns Tysheem Johnson and Dante Manning, who were both very productive players last season. But Oregon also has some younger cornerbacks in the secondary like an Aaron Flowers, who really impressed in the spring game. And he does make Oregon a lot more deeper in the secondary. This is a very talented secondary in my eyes, and people may just be underestimating how good this secondary for Oregon could be in 2024. I'm definitely excited to see what they could do with a defensive-minded head coach like Dale Lanning. Dale Lanning is one of the fastest rising coaches in all of college football and year three for Dan Lanning may be a big year, because if there was any Oregon team that could win a national championship, then it could definitely be this team. And I really think Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks are chasing down a national championship, because Oregon has never won one. And it may not be this year, but the future is in good hands with Dan Lanning as the head coach. And I could totally see Oregon finally winning a national championship with Dan Lanning. So I'm excited to see what they can do in 2024, because the sky is the limit, and let's just say, Adding a cornerback like Jabbar Muhammad was huge for the Oregon Ducks because Oregon didn't really have that standout cornerback that could lock down the best receivers last season. But I truly believe Jabbar Muhammad is going to be that guy for Oregon in 2024. But anyways, you guys let me know what you think about the Oregon Ducks heading into 2024 down in the comments below. But that's going to do it for today's video. Let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you'll love this channel because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider following my socials down in the description below. But that is going to do it, guys, and peace out.